Hello makers and welcome back to another studio vlog. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes, a YouTube channel all about knitting and sewing and stitching and living a creative and simple life as well as a look behind the scenes of my small business where I make project bags for makers. How are you doing? I hope that you've had a wonderful week. Since we visited last, I've had a wonderful week. And it is now Saturday, so my weekend is off to a great start. I just returned home from Pacifica, California. I went across the bay and down a little bit from where I live in the San Francisco Bay Area to visit Kelly and the Royal Bee Yarn Company. She just relocated to a larger space and it is beautiful i'm sharing video clips here with you all it was just so stunning and so gorgeous and so exciting to look forward to knit nights there again pretty soon as we're gearing up to reopen a little bit more here in california she has an outdoor space which it was very cold and damp today it had rained uh, earlier in the day and i got there just when she had pretty much opened the shop so I had the place to myself most of the time uh, with the few other knitter shoppers as well. And oh my goodness, so gorgeous. I went and picked up some yarn and a magazine that I'm going to share with you here in a little bit. Uh, I have a new cast on that I'm going to be gearing up for with this gorgeous yarn. And I have an update today also on my two sock projects. Um, what else? Oh, I wanted to update you on what I'm reading as well as uh, let you know that a long overdue and exciting what I've read the past three months <laughs> video is on its way. Uh, I have some, a little bit of shop news um, to update you on. First, I'll stop here and just quickly say thank you all so, so much for your excitement and enjoy about the holiday boxes. I'll share more information here in a little bit if you're interested, but thank you, thank you. We are nearly sold out, and I say we because I am collaborating with a wonderful yarn dyer, Nina of Speckled Finch Yarns, on one of the types of boxes. So thank you, thank you. So more details to come on that. Um... And yeah, so let's get started and uh, visit for a little bit. I hope you have a nice, cozy, or refreshing beverage. I feel like if there's new yarn in the house, you gotta start with the new yarn, right? <laughs> Look at this beautiful, oh, such gorgeous color blue. Oh, this is a tank top um, waiting to be made. I am going to be making the Keen Wonder, and I am so excited to cast this on. This is gonna be my second garment of the year. I am counting it, even though it's technically not a sweater, but it will be part of our uh, year-long sweater make-along. Um, and oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So let me tell you about this yarn, and I actually am gonna like look even deeper into <laughs> the yarn myself, um, just looking at the makeup of it. I just felt it and Kelly recommended it when I went in the store because I said I wanted a nice summery base cotton bamboo was cool too if she had it she's like oh, let me tell you about this so this is Kobasi DK by Hiko or Haiku maybe Haiku here's the label so you can see it this is a cotton bamboo nylon and silk base it is 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, and 21% elastic nylon, and 8% silk. Uh, each skein is 50 grams, 128 meters, 140 yards. I got seven of them uh, for the size that I'm gonna make of the Keen Wonder. It's I'm gonna do the 50 inch bust, so um, it asks for two inches of positive ease. So that's what I'm aiming for. I am going to swatch. Don't worry. <laughs> so I'm going to swatch and see if that works well. Uh, this is color 011 lot 5. I don't think it has a colorway name except for amazing blue. So here's a look at it up close. It's got this like really cool springy ply like twist to it and it's very comparable this yarn to um, a yarn that I used I think it's called Joya Baby that I think it's discontinued now that I had received as a gift 
um, a few years ago from my friend Cheryl when she was in Italy and I made my shift cowl out of that. I'll show you a picture of that here. So I've knit with a very similar plied yarn or spun yarn or however you want to say it. And Kelly did give a heads up that um, when you start to work with it, you have to get used to it because you can, uh, especially if you like twist your yarn for tension around your fingers a certain way, it can un um, twist it and it could become kind of splitty. Um, and I kind of remember that I had to get, I think I had to like twist. I usually do like two turnarounds on my ring finger for tension. Uh, when I hold my yarn in my right hand, um, and I think I had to do it one time, but then I kind of got the hang of it and it was cool and I could just fly like the wind and knit like the wind. I chose this really beautiful, bright, uh, I don't know what you would call this, like robin blue, royal blue maybe. Um, what would you call it? Let me know in the comments. But I just think it's gonna be perfect for a summer top. I don't have a color quite like this in my wardrobe, I don't believe. At least not in knitted, but oh, it's gonna be so good. I am really looking forward to casting this on. I'm gonna cast it on next week. I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm trying, I really want to, but I have to be mindful that things are very, very um, busy, uh, excitingly busy at work right now um, because we're gearing up for the reopening of stuff. So yeah, I'll just leave that there. <laughs> Can't quite talk about it yet, but it's very exciting times. So, oh, yarn fumes, amazing. And then I will just quickly show you because I wanna take a look through it and give you a proper review if you will once I read it but I got my first I think this is my first Lina magazine and I have been wanting one of these for so long I almost said coveted but I've just been really wanting a Lina magazine I think if I I think if I really love this which it has the potential that I will. I think I might subscribe to this as well as Pom Pom Quarterly again and get the physical versions. I haven't done that for some time. And I used to just wait to pick them up at my local shops, um, which I still want to do, but I just, I don't head there as often quite yet. Pandemic, but also I live a little bit further than I used to when I first started knitting and getting this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but I think I might subscribe and treat myself. I've been doing that with Taproot Magazine and I love getting that in the mail and having that, uh, I think that's quarterly. I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe every month. Um, I should be getting one pretty soon, which will be nice, but oh, I can't wait. I, I love this one. I saw a couple of people on Instagram sharing this pattern. Very, very simple um, staple kind of sweater that you can put in your wardrobe. This is for summer. This is the summer edition. There's some beautiful socks in here, articles. Just, oh, I love it. Love the whole vibe. Ooh, look at this. Look at the back on this, on this one. Beautiful. So more info on this to come as I take a look at it. But let's jump into knitting updates. So I uh, have two sock projects going on. I just looked down and I have a lovely gray hair <laughs> right on my shoulder. Uh, just uh, have two sock projects. The first is the Sock Exploration Socks by Denise DeSantis, Earth Tones Girl, aka Earth Tones Girl. This is my finished one that I finished uh, last week, I think, early last week. Oh, love it, love it. The yarn, uh, which I neglected to share the yarn last uh, vlog, uh, but I do always include everything down in the description box below if you're wanting links or info about things that I share. Uh, the yarn is Yarn Cafe Creations in her uh, Nightmare on Elm Street colorway. Love, I love the various colors in there and the bright, bright green so so nice and this is the the highlight of this sock is the shadow wrap heel which is a short row uh heel a variation of a short row heel it is knit cuff down uh and here is my second sock last time i think i just had done the cuff so i've gotten 
a, a good chunk. Um, doing a little bit of meeting knitting here and there. Got the heel done this week. And then I just started the foot yesterday and it's just zooming along. I uh, did quite a bit on a, a Zoom stitch and chat this morning and yeah, loving it, loving it. Not much more to report on it quite yet. Um, I am going up to see, these are, my socks are usually for my mom. I make them for my mom. So um, I'm going to try to remember in the morning to bring them with me. I'm going to go up and have a quick Memorial Day weekend visit with them as well as do a couple of adulty things. I have to uh, finalize the title like purchase switch over of my leased car to me because I'm going to start I'm going to purchase my car essentially and start paying it off and all that Yes, Anyway, TMI. But, <laughs> but I'm going to be going up to do that. Um, and by up there, I mean the Sacramento area is where my family lives. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to have her try, obviously not this one on, but try on this one. And then the second uh, pair of socks that I'm making are the Sweet Vanilla Socks Toe Up Socks by Jules Hill of So Sweet Violet. Both of these designers have wonderful podcasts that I highly recommend that you check out. They are some of my favorites here on YouTube. And here is the finished sock. Not on the sock blocker, but <laughs> love it. And this has a beanie toe and a go day heel, which I really, really enjoy. I'm eager also for mom to try this on and see what she thinks. And here is the second sock. I hadn't cast this on yet last week when I uh, had showed you, I think I just finished uh, the first sock uh, while I was chatting with you last week. Um, so, I've gotten quite a bit. This is obviously toe up this pattern. So it's quite lovely. And this is a stitch marker from Denise. I'll try to focus so you can kind of see what it says. Love it. It says, do more of what makes you happy. And she just recently had a stitch marker update in her shop in Denise and Earth Tones Girl shop. Um, and I, I'm I haven't even looked, but I'm sure it's sold out. <laughs> but I think she's going to uh, do another round of stitch markers pretty soon. So stay tuned um, to her uh, Instagram or wherever you can find her. So yeah, so those are my two sock projects that I have going on. And let me go grab my book that I finished and chat with you about that. Last week, I shared that I was going to be hunkering down and try to finish The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Uh, it was a lingering whip, if you will, of a book. And I'm happy to report that I accomplished just that and sat down over the course of a couple of days and finished the book. I will have a full review on this upcoming booktube, if you will, video, which will come out, I'm aiming for Monday, Memorial Day. Um, and, but I will just say, of course, spoiler free always, that I really, really recommend this book. It is beautifully written. It is a beautiful story. It is heart-wrenching, which I, I, I just, it, um, hit home <laughs> in a lot of ways because of my family having a similar story. Uh, this takes place in the Dust Bowl and follows a family that uh, flees the Midwest, Texas specifically in the Panhandle to try and survive and they come to, here to California. They were part of the Okies group um, and it was, it was heart-wrenching but also beautiful and hopeful and what a interesting time to read such a story in a quasi similar time period of another global or national in this in the case of this story emergency and um, a lot of of here I am already giving a review but a lot of lessons to be learned and um, kind of things to look out for as we re-enter into the world uh, post COVID or you know, post lockdown COVID because COVID's still here. <laughs> but yeah, highly recommend. So many books still on my to be read and that I'm going to be jumping into first. I'm trying to be better about not like saying I will read this book this month. I will read this book this month. 
because sometimes you hit a week and like right now the the next few weeks honestly there are several books that I want to read but I need to go back into my comfort zone which is YA fantasy apparently <laughs> these days um, and I've been listening to the Grishaverse series uh, for the most part so I think I'm going to start listening to that. I am um, hosting a book club over on Patreon for our Patreon community over there if you're interested uh, and we're finishing up the book of or I almost said the book of longings which is another really great book but this is uh, the girl with the louding voice. Uh, and I have to finish up that book uh, in the next couple of days, and I've switched over to the audiobook for that. Um, and we have a book that is coming up, uh, Arsenic and Adobo. I think that's, yeah, uh, which I'm looking forward to reading too. But otherwise, I just kind of need to, it, it's a release, and it's just like knitting. It's like, what whip do I want to pick up today? However, I do need to keep for me personally, I need to keep my whips to three. I need to keep my books to three max that I'm reading at the same time, if I even can read several stories at the same time. So otherwise, it just becomes a little bit overwhelming and I get a little scattered and then nothing gets done. I, let me know if, uh, if you are the same. I have a feeling many of us are the same. <laughs> But yeah, so that are that is the, the book report that I wanted to give you since I mentioned it on the vlog last week. And then uh, just to wrap up, it's going to be a short-ish visit today. Um, but I wanted to, again, thank you all so much for your excitement and for your support for the holiday boxes. So the holiday boxes went on sale this past Wednesday. We are down to... I think there's 15 right now of the yarn boxes and I think I've got like eight or five in there for the cross stitch boxes and uh, what they are are pre-ordered uh, mystery kind of boxes to be opened throughout the course of 12 days during the holiday season in December. Whatever holiday you celebrate, be it Christmas, Hanukkah, what have you, winter solstice, Yule, what have you. So um, they are just to celebrate um, Huga, cozy time of year. It will be inspired by the season that is celebrated here in San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and I, there will be an, there t those two types of boxes. So in the yarn box, which I call it, there will be an exclusive uh, Stitching the High Notes uh, uh, drawstring bag, which actually I have an example right here. This is uh, one of my bags that I've kept for myself from the Sweeter Than Honey collection from this past February. So it'll be a beautiful version of this bag in exclusive fabric for the box, as well as a skein of yarn by Nina of Speckled Finch Studios, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, we are collaborating on the colorway, which will be inspired by the fabric um, for the boxes. And I'm so excited for it. It's going to be so amazing. And then in addition to that, there'll be several yarny related goodies and treasures that are a surprise and that you will unwrap over the course of 12 days. So, so looking forward to that and then the cross stitch version of the box for all you stitchers out there will be an exclusive um, needlework pouch version of in the same fabric so a needlework pouch and then a which I don't have an example of here but I will put up a picture of what the needlework pouches look like and then there will be a cross stitch pattern by me can't believe I finally designed a cross stitch pattern so that'll be included as well as things to maybe help you make the pattern as well as some other stitcher related goodies and treasures to open up throughout the 12 days of the holiday season so thank you all so much there uh, as I said still a handful up in the shop uh, once the yarn boxes are sold out that will be it I'm at cap or else I will be literally living surrounded by advent or what have you, holiday boxes. 
<laughs> I think that's going to be the case anyway. Uh, and then the cross stitch boxes, if those uh, sell out, I will put like a small amount more in there and then that'll be the cap for those. So yay. Uh, also, I will be doing a small restock of uh, two collections that I recently had, the Spring Butterflies and the Gardening Joy collections. So there'll be a few more of the bags in those fabrics uh, on Monday, May 31st. Uh, those are not pre-orders, so those will be ready to ship once the post office opens back up <laughs> after the holiday. Uh, and uh, then that is it, as well as some other things that are coming down the pike that I think I put on the website. I think I'll be having a Scrappy Notions update sometime in June, uh, meaning Notions bags made from scraps that I kept from past fabric collections. Uh, and this time it's gonna be all summer related stuff. So summer fabrics that I've had over the course of the business. So starting two and a half years ago, we're coming up on the third anniversary, which is crazy. Uh, and then in July, it's gonna be Christmas in July y'all. So more details on that come down the pike, but yeah. That's it for this week. I hope that you all are doing well. Please let me know what you are making down in the comments below. I'd love to hear uh, if you're taking part in the year long sweater, Mel. Uh, please share in our Ravelry group, which is linked down below, as well as on Instagram using the hashtag. Um, I've been catching up and going through and hitting like on all the beautiful makes that you are making. It's just gorgeous and so inspiring if you're needing some inspiration or some f some ideas for sweaters or garments to make definitely check out the hashtag or the Ravelry group so yeah so I will see you all next week have a wonderful one and thanks for visiting today <laughs>